welcome back to Ideas That Shape the World podcast. I'm your host, Terdon DeBeau, and of course, I'm the host of this series. I'm also the founder of the Creative Entrepreneur Academy and the CEO of Creative Thought Solutions. Now, this podcast is all for the world changers. You know how we do. I love to be able to talk to people who are creative. I love to be able to talk to people who are, that have ideas that are just shaping the world and moving them forward. And so I go and find those people and I bring them right here so you can hear from them too. So I'm gonna let you guys hear from who the guests are today. I have none other than Incognito and none other than Bezac. And I'm so excited about this episode because they're both creatives that are moving the world for forward in their own way. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. Well, thank you for having me, Turn On. No problem. All right. Incognito posted on the corner radio at Personality here in the state of Ohio. And yeah, I do radio. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and thank you for having us, Turdon. Uh, I'm Bizak, aka Blase Bees. What's the good one? You already know Instagram sensation. Follow me at Bizak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so thank you guys so much for being here. Now, um, pretty much the show is for entrepreneurs and creatives, people who are taking their ideas and they're not afraid to go and do something with them. So tell me a little bit about your journey to how did you become hosted on the Kona? <laughs> ah, that's a good good story right there. I'll try to keep it uh, short for you. So I started um, radio in high school, and um, I used to just be a fan of the radio game. You know, music was my first love, and uh, I used to call up to the radio station, similar to like how my listeners do now. You know, uh, we call those P1 listeners, and I end up introducing myself to one of the guys who worked at the radio station, and by the time we met each other he was like hey bro you got a radio voice and i was like okay cool it wasn't on my mind at the time but you know we exchanged contacts and uh we built a relationship over time and he was like yo i can get you in in the game and i was like okay that'd be cool and then he was like no nah, i'm for real so you know he kept his word and i was able to get an interview and uh got the interview and then i was on mm. on air so you know and then it, you know throughout life i realized that it was a passion and pretty much my purpose and my calling to do it you know but mm. i had to earn it for me to understand that it was my purpose and my passion right you know what I'm saying? but because at first the way it happened how i got in the game somebody was like hey i can get you on mm -hmm. when you don't work hard for something to get taken away so i did get fired in 2009 mm -hmm. and it wasn't until then that i realized that hey this is what i'm supposed to be doing that's a great story like of uh, you know like you said kind of jumping in because like you know things don't really get handed to you that often and so sometimes when it does you know you can um let the opportunity go or you know kind of just it, it, it could be like the wrong timing for it. And so when that happened to you, like what what went off in your head to say like, okay, like, okay, I'm gonna get serious about this. Well, the relationships, I mean, the industry, you know, it's a lot of fake love. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it when that happened, the phones, calls stopped getting answered, the backstage passes slowed down, the uh, access, you know, was getting denied. And uh, I had to become almost like a civilian to mm -hmm. the industry so once i realized that i didn't want to be on that side of the game that hurt and then i had to tap into what it was that i wanted to do mm -hmm. because my very first job was in radio so um i remember trying to go work in cobb county mall was that cumberland mall mm -hmm. i remember walking through there like hey man i think i'll fill out me some applications one day and i got up to go do it and when i actually walked in the mall i said man i keep doing this <laughs> it's like what i want to be doing you right. know what i'm saying I, I just didn't have a burning view to do anything else Mm -hmm. So I knew then, and I was like, yo, I'm supposed to be doing this radio thing. And mm -hmm. I stayed down, went deep, you know what I'm saying, spiritually, and was like, shoot, I get my shot back. I ain't going to let up. Right. Man, that's such, that's such a great story because that's what I feel like you have to do. You have to kind of go inward, and then externally you'll start seeing everything work out. And so um, I love what you said there about how you had to dig deep within, and then, you know, things started working out the way that you wanted them to work. And so, um, Bizak, so I know you as, like, I love the content that you create. Mm -hmm. So you're a content creator. Definitely. And like, of course I gravitated to that because I just got my certification in content marketing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, this is great content. Yeah, <laughs> and, so, so. and so then I ran into you, like we just kept running into to each other yeah. on happenstance. I'm <laughs> like, you know what? Like, you need to come in, like we need to do something. Yeah, and crazy. so like, tell me about your journey. Like how did how did you get to where you are now? Um, <clears throat> it's definitely a long journey. Uh, I would say when I was six and seven, uh, I started rapping first. That was the first entertainment thing I ever did. Uh, my mom would write my lyrics first, mm -hmm. and my uncle wrote my cousin's lyrics. We were uh, known as C. Robin Bizak. We went to the grog shop, 
we did festivals, and I was seven at the time, mm-hmm. I was in first and second grade. Um, stop rapping, I started playing football. You feel me? So I started playing football. I'm like, oh, I gotta play football, I gotta do something, I gotta get into the, the school things, right. I gotta do that. I stopped rapping. Um, but that was good though. When me and him were doing that, it was it was definitely on the upscale, like we were some little, little kids, like right. it was crazy. So um a couple of years down the road, I just started doing plays. Like my first play was a church play. Mm-hmm. Um it was a church play. I didn't even have a, a, a strong lead. But what made me want to do the plays was uh, I saw my mom do a play at church. And I was like, dang, mom, that was really good. Like, mm-hmm. how you do that? That was like, just that just looks so cool. Like, I think I want to do that. So I did a church play. And then I got um, into this program called uh, Heights Youth Theater. Now, Heights Youth Theater is a program where you can just act if you want to at uh, middle schools, at Wiley Middle School in Cleveland Heights. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met Malcolm at. And um, so this, I was in the seventh grade. He was in the fifth. Um, and I had a audition for the Scarecrow. I was the Wiz. Uh, no, the Wiz. Um, I was the Scarecrow. And, uh, mm-hmm. he was the Lion. And we hit it off. He was the only two black dudes in the uh, cast. You mm-hmm. feel me? It was like, a whole bunch of white people. That, um, it was very diverse, though. Uh, and I was beatboxing back then. And, um, in middle school, like, I would beatbox so much. I would beatbox even around the house so much. My mom and my dad was like, oh, yeah, you gotta stop beatboxing. I was on beatbox punishment. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, you gotta stop beatboxing. You beatboxing too much. I'm like, dang, I'm beatboxing too much. So I just stopped beatboxing for a minute. And, um, I was just playing football. I was just doing plays and stuff. I was really just getting into the acting realm, just like playing with my uh, body instrument, just getting to know me mm-hmm. more. Um, I did ballet when I was younger. I did tap dance when I was younger, and I was big on dancing too. Like I love dancing. Like okay, expression. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, definitely <laughs> expression. I think because uh, my dad showed me how to dance. You know, he would do a little bit of dancing. Right. Uh, my cousin danced. Uh, my mom taught praise dance and modern dance, and also ballet too. Mm-hmm. So I was just around that music, dancing my whole life. Mm-hmm. So it like it just kind of made sense. Um, so when I got to high school, uh, I started playing football. I was still playing football. Um, me and Malk, um, uh, when I got to my junior year of high school, uh, Malk came in as a freshman. He was singing. Uh, I kind of took him under my wing. Me and my, uh, guys was just showing him how, uh, how to, you know, be cool in the high school world. Like just what to do, what not to do. Right. You feel me? So we was just basically on the lookout. Um, and that's when Vine started popping. Vine was uh, mm-hmm. real big when I was getting out of middle school, going into uh, high school. And I was like, damn, I gotta be Vine famous. I gotta be Vine famous. So it was like, it was the first social media. It was like, hot. I was like, I gotta get on here. I gotta be Vine famous. I gotta be Vine famous. So I just started like posting little silly six second videos on Vine. So this is the before Instagram. Famous. Before Instagram, yeah, because Instagram <laughs> didn't even have videos at the time. Right, Instagram didn't right. have videos to like my pictures. yeah, like my junior year, my my sophomore year of high school. That's when Instagram uh, had videos. I think that was like. 2014, 2013, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, Vine is over with. And Vine was really over with. Like, everybody who was Vine famous moved to Instagram. They became Instagram famous already because everybody who was on Vine knew who uh, the Vine famous people were. Right. I really didn't have that much uh, Vine clout, but I still, like, pushed myself. Like, and I uh, had my Instagram for, like, at least nine years. Mm-hmm. A long time. I had it coming out of eighth grade. Um, I started when I was 14. I'm 20 now. So mm-hmm. I had my Instagram definitely for... Uh, well, about six years. It was definitely for a long time. Um, so when me and Malcolm went viral, it was just like, wow, I got to like, just keep posting, keep posting. Like when me and Malcolm went viral, it, uh, the video went viral on Twitter. He was singing, I'm in love with the Coco. I was just beatboxing at a lunch table. Right. Like, and uh, it was just a random girl recording and she put it on her Twitter. I was like, oh, I got to make me a Twitter now, huh? I was <laughs> like, Dude, I don't even know what my Twitter name should be. So I made a Twitter um, and we was just doing the Instagram stuff. And then I just started doing skits in between here, mm-hmm. you know, beatboxing more. Like, and I'm just beatbox for fun. Like, so it was just like, yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I might as well start rapping again. So I just started writing. You right. Know I, mean? I just started right. writing my bars. You feel me? Me and my uh, guys go by Blase. We uh, actually made a group because they was like, oh, y'all look like y'all make music. So why not make music? You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So we just started making music. We just been perfecting our craft. So right now we just been perfecting our craft and just working. And just putting out content and that's just how that happened like and i just make skits when i can so that's awesome like thank you for sharing your journey oh thank you because um yeah it, it helped me to see like where like i love the fact that your parents encouraged your expression mm-hmm. uh, i'm really big on that and and that like you should really see where someone's gifts are Definitely. and start cultivating it because you know sometimes parents can have a a way of looking like okay this is the path i want for you but they yeah. don't pay attention to like what what this individual you know that's not like anyone else in the world um is good at and mm-hmm. so I, I love the fact that you just have been cultivating that 
over the years and then you use that to just do what you love yeah um to do what you love with the beatboxing and to to be able to get that out there because a lot of people don't know that by the time people hear about you you've been doing what you've been doing right you know yeah. um and you've been you know getting good at it so really overnight success is really over time success Definitely. and so yeah. um i love that i love that's why i love hearing people's journeys because people don't know like Sometimes when they just get a wind of someone, they're like, oh, well, where did they come from? And they must have just started doing it. And then they look like, oh, I could do that, too. And it's like, no, you've been doing this since you were a kid. Like, right. no, you've been thinking about this since you were young, too. And so I love the fact that, you know, on your journeys, you figured out, like, oh, like, I'm good at this. And I'm just going to, like, it's a non-negotiable. I'm going for it. Right. And so what happened, um, like, there were, of course, ups and downs, like, just like with anything. What did you do to get past any kind of like difficulties or challenges, or what, what were you say? What would you say some of the challenges were that you had to get through to um, to actually kind of get to where you're trying to go? Like what what barriers? Um, well, the difficulties were just you know the normal hurdles mm -hmm. to get through it. Only thing I had to do was pray and never give up, mm -hmm. you know, and just stay consistent. Um, you know, it's a burning desire that's in the inside. So, you know, hey, man, this is what I want. And if you can see the vision, and obviously it's for you. So you just got to continue to get through it. And um, that's it. Definitely. Definitely. The hurdles are always going to be there. It's definitely about staying close with God, I think. And um, just knowing what your path is about. And just, like, um, I really had to find out, like, who I was. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I'm still finding out who I was. And I'm still young. You feel me? I still don't really know who I am yet. Right. I'm still trying to figure out. But, um. Definitely, it's about where you want to go with it. Definitely about finding, like, who you are and what you want to do with it. Like, mm -hmm. um, just figuring out, like, what you can do. Like, I really didn't know, like, how much power and how much people looked up to me until a certain age. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if I knew that at a certain age, I would have definitely moved different mm -hmm. a little bit. But, like, now I definitely know, like, how of a role model. Like, we, we are definitely role models mm -hmm. to the Cleveland community and, and much more globally. So, right. it's definitely big. Yeah, sometimes you don't realize it like when until you're in it. Yeah. Like when you're in it, then and people like people say stuff to me all the time. I'm like, okay, stop, like stop playing. Like I'm I'm just doing my day to day, so I don't see how people see you know view me as. Well, you're creative. You're making a difference. Definitely. Right. You're pushing the envelope. Yeah, you're right. giving a platform. You know what I'm saying? You're uh, putting yourself there for. So you're leading the pack. You know, you got leaders and you got followers, and you said, hey, I'm gonna be a leader and take this to the next level. So I commend you for that and thank you. For the opportunity oh no problem sure. thank thank you for even saying that um yeah for me it's just like i know that i'm supposed to be here like no one else could do what i'm you know what i'm here to do uh even my name you're not gonna find anybody else with my name yeah so like it's like in knowing that that for me that's where the power came because right. it's like Oh, so I'm the only one that can make these particular footsteps. Because mm -hmm. um, you look at like the princes and you look at like Michael Jackson, you look at like Beyonce. There is nobody else. Like people will be saying like, oh, well, don't forget to say to the glory of God. I'm like, that is the glory. When you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing and you're yes. cultivating that and you're like standing tall in it. To me, that is the glory of being created, Definitely. you know, just like when a flower blooms, that's the glory, you yeah. know, like when, when things happen that are supposed to happen, that's like the glory there. And so this hat, this hat is like, I'm trying <laughs> to keep it from falling off. But, um, so like, what do you guys do? What, what do you feel like makes you, um, creative or what do you feel like your ideas come from? Um, you want to go first, bro? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my uh, ideas come from the nineties. Uh, mm -hmm. I, they definitely come from 90s sitcoms like Martin and Jamie Foxx show, mm -hmm. uh, the Wayne Bros, because I feel like history repeats itself. So if I go back and look at old history and what they did right, mm -hmm. um, I feel like um, I can get a spark or energy. Definitely uh, keeping up with the new stuff. Like I can look at somebody and be like, oh, this just gave me an idea. If they yeah. said just one thing, like um, definitely looking at the old comedians, looking at uh, listening to old music, mm -hmm. listening to early music, listening to like even like early 70s music just yeah i can just get an idea from that so that's how i get creative by watching like television mm -hmm. definitely like um old tv shows though like people that nobody hit to like yeah like i was watching a tv show like uh, i was watching the jamie fox show and he said um he said something that ha david said i'm like oh that's where he got that from yeah like and i was like oh he does the same thing like mm -hmm. people you gotta like really 
do your research kind of like really study the game before you get into like what you love and people think they can just hop in the game and take off yeah without studying mm -hmm. but it's that's kind of like a quick way to make it to the top and fall flat on your face you right me? right Man, I love what you said. What you, you hear what he said? He said he respects the game. True. A lot of people do not respect the game. They think that if they see someone else doing something or they feel like they could just get in there and uh, they, you can be doing something different from everyone else. But nine times out of ten, to look at what someone did before you, someone has done it before you. And so to be able to respect the game, I respect that in you. And that is inspiring to be able to see other people that have gone before you and to say like, hey, you know, and that's where the individuality comes in. Because it's like, okay, well, I could do it in this way, um, but the formula is there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. That was awesome what Bizak said. That was totally spot on. <laughs> um, just use it as an inspiration. Like he said, you got to study the game. You got to know where you come from to know where you're going. And see, for me, uh, what, what inspires me is, you know, just paying attention to the bits. You know, seeing mm -hmm. what happened before me and realizing that I could put my creative niche on and then move forward. But that comes from the people. So I'm into radio, so I can't okay. move without the people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about supply and demand. Whatever they're, you know, they want is on me to supply. You know, yeah. if they want to hear this music, it's on playing that music or being around these stars. So the people is really that's more so. That's business. That's more so my inspiration yeah. of the people trying to see what's going on and just adapting. I'm going to try to get them to be the uh, liaison. Mm -hmm. to it but everything at home said that's it that's by own yeah that's by own so then um i know that you 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 took over and you started this hood jeopardy mm -hmm. like where was that where did that come from hood jeopardy uh basically it's just like b -Zach was saying it's nothing new under the sun you right. just put your name on it right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. whatever you're gonna do you just put a name on it so basically it's like family feud questions yeah they come from watching family feud and mm -hmm. you know steve harvey them uh it'd be asking you questions usually what five or eight of them up there on the board yeah, yeah. to be honest y'all that's where i get a lot of the questions from <laughs> <laughs> go to target go buy the family feud game yeah. like going about asking the same questions off the card. <laughs> <laughs> All that is, Mike D, no, he okay to the station see them cards on the side. Uh, <laughs> right. But, but yeah, so, that's so I had, just because you do that, like I had to just, you know, come up with a few questions so that we could play <laughs> Hood Jeopardy. Because... I'm going to ask you tonight, man. Right? <laughs> so, so, wait, not, so, not to catch you on, this is where it come from, right? So education, you know, runs the world. Everybody mm -hmm. likes to be knowledgeable and empowered. Yeah. So if you ask me a question and I get it wrong, mm -hmm. once I find out the right answer, I'm going to put that on somebody else. Right. So if I get these answers wrong right now, I'm asking these questions tonight. Yeah. The, thing <laughs> is, the thing is, is you like to share knowledge. Knowledge is power. You like to share it. So mm -hmm. if you get it right, you like, bam, that's what's up. But if you get it wrong, you better believe when you see somebody he don't know, he's going to say, hey, bro, yeah. <laughs> name me five states that start with the letter A. And yeah. I'm like, oh. It don't matter. <laughs> and now, and, and, <laughs> but that's but what you just said was key um and a lot of people don't know this you know people know about like you learn auditory you mm -hmm. know by listening you learn visually by seeing stuff you learn kinesthetically by touching and feeling having to experience it but the the number one teacher um beside all of those is to be able to teach someone else what you know okay. like and people don't realize like when you get to a space where you could teach something that means that you've actually learned it um, and so people tell me all the time, cause I teach a lot, um, with my academy, they're like, well, I know this, I know that. Okay. Well, does your life show that you know it? Does right. your bank account show that you know it? Could you go teach it to someone else? Stop saying, you know, stuff that you haven't applied or talked to someone else so that they can also learn the same thing. So I love what you said there with that. Pass it on. Pass the knowledge on. Okay. So. Uh-oh, B-Zack on my team. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> just me. B-Zack on my team. <laughs> okay. So, came with the hard questions too. I feel it already. Yeah. <laughs> You're smiling too hard. <laughs> no, I'm always smiling, so that's not indicative of that, anything. That's the extra cheese. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, black people use this to cover broken windows. Tape. Uh -uh. Well, I thought it was duct tape. Uh -uh. Well, they use a sheet. Cardboard. Eh. Plastic. Closer, but no. What is, I'm duct taping plastic, right? Yeah, Trash bag. Oh, oh yeah, that is. <laughs> Trash bag. That is, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so. Ratchet girls always claim they have these, but no one ever seems to see them. 
Check the house. <laughs> 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 TV and like my dad, um, he had a doctorate and two masters, so he started me reading at three. So Great. like oh, wow. I just used to study all the time. I still do study right. and I get certifications. I, I'm getting another one this week. So <laughs> so that's why, yeah, um, just a lot of knowledge to to share and spread. And this hat is sharing and spreading all over my head. Okay, so lower <laughs> lumbar. What was that? The lower, the lower lumbar. Lumbar. Lower lumbar. lumbar. <laughs> you gotta go find me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for people that are looking to, you know, do what you do, to do what you do, they're looking at you, you know, like you said, your own models, people see you, you know, you're visible. For those people that are like getting discouraged, um, 
and they don't know where to start or they don't know like what to do, what can you tell them? And that's <coughs> cliche advice. Like what can you really tell them that would help them to be able to move forward in whatever it is that they're deciding to do, whether it's radio wise, whether it's they want to, you know, be an internet cessation, they want to be an artist. Um, what can you tell them? Um, to be what you want to be, I want to say definitely uh, listen. Listen, for sure. Because mm -hmm. people like to talk and a tongue could make you deaf. You feel me? So, mm. yeah. So, you talk too much. You ain't okay, you just talking. Okay, come on. Be exactly. You feel me? You're, You're not listening. Jewels. Yeah, so, like, and uh, being consistent. Definitely being consistent. Consistency mm -hmm. is key. People see you be consistent. And they're like, oh, he's being consistent. Like, oh, yeah. He on his stuff. Like, he on the shit. You feel me? So, um, definitely and, um, thinking win-win. Mm -hmm. Always thinking win-win. Um, and definitely, uh, two heads are always greater than one. Don't ever think you can do it on your own. You need somebody. Yeah. You need yeah. somebody. Um, and definitely, I want to go back to thinking win win. I carry this with me every day, thinking win win. Like yeah. if you're in a situation where you get a hundred dollars and you um have the ability to give the other person however much out of that hundred dollars, and they say, uh, well, you say you give them twenty dollars and you get to keep eighty, mm -hmm. and um, they like, well. I don't think it's fair because you get to keep 80 and I get to keep 20. And you, you you did nothing for that money. They did nothing for that money, but you're still able to give them a cut. And they can be like, well, no, no deal. I, I don't think we should get the money. Or, um, you feel me, if y'all both have money and they're uh, acceptable with the pay you give them, it's a deal. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like even if you keep $99 and you give them one, you feel me, it's still they're still a dollar richer than they were. You yeah. feel me? So that's going back to thinking win-win, like holding the door for a lady that doesn't even say um, your thank you or mm -hmm. your, you feel me? Like mm -hmm. still win-win. Yeah, she gonna keep being rude. That's yeah. all right. That you feel me? me? It's on yeah, it's yeah. on me. You feel me? Like I'm well, it's on her. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's definitely about just thinking win-win and just you know being ahead of the game, getting five steps ahead of the game, like planning, definitely um, writing it down, yeah. um, putting your goals everywhere, accomplishing your goals, like. Right, um, seeing what yeah. you did, yeah, visualizing, like getting a thirty day board if you have to, like sit down and like plan for the month. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Like sit down for the week, see what you did for the week, and then you feel me, go kick it. You see what I'm saying? And that's that's foundational. Like yeah. to to go, you know, write your goals down, try to accomplish them, see how you did at the end of the month. Yeah. Like that's something that you know everyone can do. And I, I love what you said with that. And then um, I love what you said, too, about it being win-win. Mm -hmm. I was hyped this morning. Like, I was hyped because um, I, I do car concerts where, like, I just get hyped off of songs. And so, <laughs> like, um, this morning was the Boss song by Jay-Z and Beyonce, the Carters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how he said, you know, you're not successful unless the people next to you are successful, too. I was just like, man, like, I felt that in my spirit. Because <laughs> it's like... Why not win-win? And yeah. I feel like a lot of people are like, well, you know, what's for me is for me. And I don't want to teach the game. And I don't want to do this. And I don't want to help them because who helped me? You know, having like a selfish mentality. But you'll never go broke giving to someone else. You'll always have something that comes back to you. Right. Whether it be, um, in what, and most times it's in ways that's not even monetary. Right. It's in ways that are like soul fulfilling. Yeah. So I, I love what you said about being win win and making sure that your motives and your intentions are always good Definitely. to be able to see others do the same. Truly, uh, for me, I would say stay true to you, who you are. Uh, look in the mirror and realize, you know, that there's a burning sensation there. Never give up and uh, just use as many or create as many resources as you can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because your network equals your net worth. Yeah. And in this game, um. You know, the game is sold, not told. You got some people in the way, you know what I'm saying, who are going to have that mentality that you were speaking about, like, no, I'm not going to share the game, or you can't let that discourage you. You're going to hear more no's than you hear yes, but you got to understand that no simply means next opportunity. Ooh. So you got to move, you gotta move forward. Ooh. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> that was move good. Forward. Move <laughs> forward. Stay down. That was it, though, right there. Yes. <laughs> Hold it down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, that was good. But but just just know that you know if you have a burning sensation, like I said earlier, if you can see the vision, then mm -hmm. then it's for you. But use your resources. Uh, like Bizak said, man, hey, you got two ears and one mouth. You need to listen twice as mm -hmm. much and make sure that you're out there networking and, and building. You know, uh, make sure that things are strategic and they line up with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your time. You can know with things. Five seconds of being in the room, like, hey, am I wasting my time? Right. Right. Benefit me. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Folks might hit you with the, hey, let's go meet up and 
work and be creative, so then they might be, oh, we need to make a store run. I didn't come here to make no store run. Right. I came with everything I needed on me. And then, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta remember the five P's, you know, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You gotta yes. be you gotta be punctual. Make sure that you're on time. Try to be as professional Ooh, as can pray be. Pray for me. But, pray but, for me. But you control <laughs> you can you control your, your own destiny. You control your own destiny yeah. and, and do realize that it's it's not gonna be um easy. It'll get greater later, but right. you know you get out whatever you put in. So if you put in a whole lot of greatness, guess mm -hmm. what you're gonna get back? Greatness. Some greatness. Yes. It might not come when you expect it to, or how mm -hmm. you want it to happen. But that greatness is gonna trickle back into you in different ways and different opportunities. Right. You, and you never know. That's how I ended up here on your couch. Yeah. Obviously, so from something that I've done in the past, yeah. and then speaking of the past, I was moving my feet, networking the right way, and I previously had a relationship with everyone in this room. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that comes from me moving my feet, using resources and understanding. You know. Right. So it, it, it ties back into you know you just get out what you put in and. Stay down. Don't never give up. If if it's something that you want to do or something that you desire, don't give up. Yeah. I, I um recommend everybody go be their own boss. Mm -hmm. Big facts. Don't work for nobody. But that's all I teach. I, I got fired from my day off five years ago and was able to build a six figure company, you know, and I have not looked back. And it was, you know, it was tough. I talk about the journey a lot to, you know, because there were times where I did want to put in, like you said, put in an application, but I'm like, ah, I just can't bring myself to do it. I know this is going to work. Yeah. And so like being able to, to do that, um, like you said, to follow that, um, I believe that that's the key right there. And then something you said too, is making sure that you're, you're paying attention to, you know, being in the right place and you know, you know, when it's time. Um, the reason I, like the reason I even met you was because. Like I was down. I was down because I went to Atlanta to shoot the last podcast episode and uh, I was supposed to shoot out to Arizona right after that for three days. But when I came back home, my house was broken into. So someone kicked in my door and like went through my whole house. So I'm like, I can't go to Arizona now. Like I don't feel comfortable doing that, leaving my house open. And so then Swoop had hit me up and he was like, you know, you need to, you got to cheer up. You know, come down here to Medusa <laughs> with me. And so then I met you. I was like, oh, like. You got to be on the show. And so, mm -hmm. like, you never know what is happening for you to, you know, for things to come about. Like, now I have the next episode, and I feel like I love this episode because we so, were able to sit down here and, um, go ahead. What were you about to say? The good thing is you're going to bounce back from that, but listening to your story, I didn't even know that happened. So, mm -hmm. for most people or some people, they would get discouraged. If mm -hmm. they were out of town, and you come back and you go, oh, somebody broke in my house. Now you soaking in your misery. Right. Mm -hmm. Bro, you got to roll with the punches and keep going because yeah. that's part of the journey. That's what's going to make you tough. You yeah. don't want it to be Thanks. a landslide. You don't want it to be super easy. You got to put some more into it. You got to be like, dang, they turned me back on me. Dang, they didn't believe in me. Yeah. Yeah. What it's about is you're not going to turn your back on yourself. Right? Yeah. You're not going to give up on yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's exactly. easy. You could have been like, Dang, that's it, man. They done came and did this. They done, I got to do this. I got to, you know what? That's going to work itself out. It's and, part and of that's story. What, yeah. Exactly. You got insurance. Yeah. And the yeah. universe works in mysterious ways. Like, and so does God. You feel me? So right. it's just like, once you, and you put out, like, I put out what I get. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, I put out into the world what I try to receive back. Right. You feel me? Right. So I put out all positive energy. Cause that's what I like receiving positive yeah. energy. Like, I didn't want to go to work that day when I had that large party. You feel me? Not mm -hmm. to serve on, but I met you. You feel right. me? That day. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know, like. Oh, let me go to work. I might make some money today or something. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because I'm a server. You see what I'm saying? Like, it depends. It, I could have a great day. I could have a terrible day. I used to wait and, tables too, by the way. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing is that you never know what each position is putting you in, in position to do. Mm -hmm. My last job I worked, I was a banquet server. I said to myself, I'm, I'm miserable. And the people that come into this room that I'm serving are going to have to hire me. And guess what? A year later, after I got fired... They were coming to me to hire, you know, hire my company That's to do marketing crazy. for them. And so it's like, but in my mm -hmm. mind, I was already there, yeah. even though that my position at that time wasn't that. Mm -hmm. And so then when I, I met you and then Swoop told me like, oh, no, like he he was the the my lead um, actor for Langston yeah, Hughes and he was doing us. So I was like, oh, OK. So yeah. you were on my radar. Mm -hmm. And then the next time I saw you, I'm like, OK, I got like, yeah. And then I went on. I didn't even know about your your Instagram. And then mm -hmm. I went on there, and then that's when I text you like, "Oh, you do content, content." Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so like, consistently. Yeah. 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 And it's so sure. it's like how everything aligns when you know you're in purpose. Mm -hmm. And so like like you said, like at first I was soaking. I'm like, I can't believe this, you know. But then um, I'm like, no, I have to be fluid like water, and I have to be as solid as a tree and being planted. 
And yeah. so those two things right there, it's like, okay, you got to be able to, like you said, roll with the punches. But at the same time, you have to be firm in what you believe and be non-negotiable on some things too. Mm-hmm. And so. I like that. Um, I was listening to you talking about being firm like a tree and it just made me thinking about being planted like a seed. You guys, if you planted a seed today, you're not going to have a whole garden tomorrow. Once you right. plant that seed, you got to water it, you got to nurture it, you got to mm-hmm. check up on it, you got to make sure it's getting the light right, yes. right. You got to make sure ain't nobody stepping on what you created. Right. So just keep that in mind with where whatever your purpose or your career, your desire is. If you plant a seed on Monday, bro, you're not going to have a garden on Tuesday. Right. You might as well just plant that seed, do whatever you need to do to make sure it's there. And when you turn around and look back, you have a bunch it's so more than what you expected. Exactly. So, so just know what you did and then continue to move forward. And I that's, saw this quote. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that's good. That, that's all this quote the other day. And it said the la- just keep in mind when you're when you're you know planting things that the last thing to grow on the tree is the fruit. How you mm. that? I was like, what? That is good because you mm-hmm. you think about like all the things that have to happen for you know manifestation of anything. Mm-hmm. It has to start in your head, and then the work has to come, and then the last thing that you see is what you already saw, you know, mm-hmm. in your head. That fruit be so sweet. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> it does. <laughs> and so I, I'm. I'm grateful. I'm grateful um, that you guys were available to come and that you guys said yes to being on the show. I love to make it conversational because I'm a real person. So um, I love for people to be able to see behind the scenes of things and, you know, the road that it takes to get there. So I'm really grateful. Thank both of you for being here on the show today. Thank you. Um, and then uh, so be Zach. I know Incognito, he had, told, he had said that you should do some, like, beatboxing yeah. on this episode. And I'm willing to spit, you know. Are you going to spit some hot fire? Oh, she going to spit. I'm willing, I'm willing to, to, to maybe spit a little something. Hold on, let me see. Okay. Okay. Oh, you got, but you got written bars. <laughs> you got written bars. <laughs> <written, laughs> I just so happened to write them last week. So I'm like, hold on, hold on. Oh, this on. fresh off the press, too. <laughs> okay. The kick did my dope. Hey. I said, <laughs> hell no. Hey. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Tell everybody where they can find you. Tell everybody where they can find you. <laughs> I'm on the radio, 7 to 12, Monday through Friday. If you're in Cincinnati, I'm on the radio, 7 to 12, Monday through Friday. And if you're in Columbus, Ohio, which happens to be the capital of Ohio, I'm on air um, Sundays, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I'm posted on the corner everywhere. Posted on the radio station. Yes. yes. Yeah, Check exactly. them out. Make sure you listen. Make sure, yeah, like you stay posted on the comments. Tell a friend, you can always download the app too and listen to us from anywhere in the world. Smart device, iPhone, Android, tablet, whatever. You How can they follow you? Uh, at D A T B O Y I N C, that boy Inc. D A T B O Y I N C. First five people to follow me right now, I'm going to follow you back. Ooh. Yes. And you can follow me on the IG or Twitter, Instagram at B Z A K, on Twitter at It's B Z A K, I T S B Z A K. Yep, and I'm going to do the same thing. First five people to follow me, y'all get a follow back. Let's do it. I'm more on Facebook too, up under Brian Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that your real name, bro? Hey, no, no, okay, no. good. I took the visa. I gave him Brian, Brian Zachary. Zachary. Hey, that's funny. Wait, though. that's going that that has to be your alter ego now. Huh? Brian, like, Brian Zachary. Zachary? Yes, yeah, that has to be a All character right. or something. <laughs> What's he turn forty? What's he turn forty? I'm Brian Zachary. I'm Brian Zachary. I'm Brian Zachary. I'm Brian Zachary. Oh no, Brian Zachary. I'm formerly known as Zach. <laughs> Make sure y'all click that link in my bio too. That way. You already know <laughs> that part. She wants the beatbox. Oh yeah, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Ever, 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 ever. To my dreams, hey. uh, it's on my mind. Uh, it don't stop my grind. Hey, but hit me if you want, uh-huh. but I ain't really, I ain't really got no time. Hey. I run my business like a gymnast, preparing for the Olympics. Hey. <laughs> Knocking down them doors, hey. they thinking I'm Jehovah's Witness. Hey. So. Hallelujah, I'm getting to do Ooh. what I love and love what I do. So, okay. hallelujah, I'm getting to okay. do what I love and love what I do. I handle my business. I handle my business. Handle my business. I handle my business. Hey, hey that was it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been brought to you by DCC. <laughs> right.
I'm gonna do my radio thing. I would freestyle, but I'm not. I'm just gonna, you know, stick to the radio side. Hey, it's an exclusive. Hey, Be presented by hey, Bizak. Hey, Mike hey, Dean on the camera. Hey, yeah. hey, I ain't here for the fame. Everybody now do things the same. Talking about how they gonna change the game. They can't shoot they shot because they got no aim. Hey. But uh, I know my lane so different. And I know my flame so gifted. Yeah. I don't let it leave my lips till I say it. They say, ah, oh, dang it, I lost hey, it. Hey, you know what I know? Oh, 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 Ideas that shape the world, and guess what? It's a rap, y'all. It's yeah. a rap. Oh, I just rapped, but it is a rap. <laughs> and my head keeps falling off. Hey. Peace out. We out. <laughs>